Today's video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to make a website, blog, or e-commerce platform, check out Squarespace. I'll leave information in the description below. Today, we are going to be making air dry clay projects. And actually, I had planned to go to the beach and collect some clay and show you how to refine it. Because where I live, we've got a lot of natural treasures like clay and chalk, and it's pretty good place to live actually. But I did a bit of research and uh, apparently taking things off the beach is highly illegal for good reason. So in order to be an upstanding member of society, we will not be doing that. Today, we're gonna be using some DAS. This is just very cheap air dry clay that you can get pretty much everywhere. And today I'm gonna be testing out some different techniques, trying to show you some fun ways to create stuff and then decorating it. We're just gonna have fun. Anyway, let's get into it. Good morning from my office. I have my air dry clay. In hindsight, I should have bought the brown dust clay because it's a little bit softer and it just creates a really lovely finished result, especially when you mix it with the water. It gives a very smooth effect, but uh, this is what I have on hand at the moment and I can't go to the shops to get some more. We'll just do our best and we'll sand it down if necessary. I've got all of my tools in front of me. I've got a rolling pin and a sharp object to score the clay. If you don't have these, don't worry. You can use a can of fizzy drink to roll through things nice and flat and you could use a toothpick or a barbecue skewer to score the clay. I've also got some cookie cutters that I'm going to try and use and I've got a bowl of lukewarm water so I can smooth out the clay. I'm going to pass you over to voiceover Hermione so that I can watch Netflix while we do this. Okay, bye. Thank you for letting me switch to voiceover. I'm currently on my third round of watching Parks and Rec. It never gets old. Anyway, the first thing I'm gonna make is a little trinket dish in the shape of a star, and I'm using cookie cutters from Poundland to keep it quite inexpensive. Now, this one was a little bit difficult for my first piece. I should have left this to last, but it turned out okay. So I cut my shape and softened the edges using my fingers and a little bit of water, and then I rolled out this long sausage shape and pressed it flat to make the edges. I used a pointy implement in, instrument <laughs> to score the edges of the star to keep it in place and then I started wrapping this the whole way around, making sure to really tuck it into the corners and the points. Uh, it doesn't look like it right now but I promise I spent quite a lot of time trying to mold the shape. As you can see, it did warp a little bit, I'm not brilliant at sculpting things out of clay but it was fun nevertheless and this is all about having fun and just playing around and doing an activity that keeps you entertained in lockdown. The next thing I made was a candle holder and to do this I rolled out another long sausagey shape and I smoothed it out using some water again. I took a pillar candle and wrapped the sausage clay around the candle and made sure it was firmly in place so that it could stand up. And then I once again used some water to get rid of any of the creases and the wrinkles in the clay and I put it aside to let it dry. I wanted to make a piece that would match with my star trinket dish, so I decided to make an earring holder. I flattened out my clay and I used a knife to create this kind of arched shape. I then smoothed the edges to make it nice and even across both sides. I scored a line where I wanted to fold it because I want this to stand up, so I folded this over and tried to get it to stand up at a 90 degree angle. As you can see, it's a little bit floppy, but don't worry. I have a hack for this. I used an old box and placed it up against the box to dry, but before I could let it dry, I had to poke the holes for the earrings to go into. I made quite a few sets of holes, making sure they went all the way through to the other side so that the earrings would fit. And once I was finished, I was able to let it dry. I actually ended up turning the box upside down to dry it so that it was on top of the box, you'll see it in a minute, but moving on. Another project, I wanted to make a mug. Now this is a mug that I'm not going to drink out of, so I'm not gonna use a food safe gloss on it, but if you're going to make a mug that you wanna drink out of, make sure to use a food safe glaze. So I cut a circle shape and then I made quite a large rectangle shape that I wrapped around the base. Once again, scoring it to make sure that it was gonna sit nicely and it would stick together quite easily. 
This one was actually so much harder than it looked. It was quite the pain to get it to go together and to make sure the sides were nice and even. It looks a little wonky, I'm not gonna lie, but I think that's part of the charm of working with clay. It's never gonna be perfect and uh, you just got to enjoy the process. I also cut a little handle for it. I scored my mug and I added the handle onto it with a little bit of water and when I left it to dry I put something underneath to make sure it wasn't going to go too wobbly. Too wobbly being the key words here because it is not perfect but it, there you go you can see I've propped it up. And the last thing I'm going to make is another easy trinket dish and this was kind of an experiment because I want to press some flowers into the clay to see how it works out. I cut a circle, smooth the edges, here are the flowers, don't mind the fork, I was going to try some printing with a fork, uh, it, it didn't happen. <laughs> so now I'm just placing my dried flowers which I think I bought from Amazon on top and just trying to get a nice little arrangement going. Uh, this took me ages. I couldn't figure out where I wanted them to go. You can press your own flowers but they're currently not in season so I just thought I'd buy some and that would be easier. Once I had the uh, shape that I wanted I pressed them down and made sure they were really tight into the clay using my little uh, rolling pin. I also went back over it with the cookie cutter to ensure that the edges were nice and circular. So once that was done, I actually left this one to dry on a smaller cookie cutter and pressed it in slightly in the middle to give it some raised edges and it dried pretty well. Okay, believe it or not, that took almost three hours, but I've got five projects drying down here. Some better than others but we're gonna work on them tomorrow and fingers crossed they'll be okay so i'll see you tomorrow clay update it's been 48 hours and most of them are ready to paint i checked them yesterday but some of the chunkier ones weren't quite dry especially underneath this one's still a little bit damp in the middle so we might leave that one another day but all the thin ones are dry all the way through some of them turned out cute some of them not so much but we're gonna see if we can fix them as you can see with the earring holder i tried to dry it on a box to keep that semi 90 degree angle going this is being dried on the cutter to give it a little bit of an indent and the monstrosity that is this mug has been drying with this underneath to keep the handle up we're gonna work on this so let's see if we can make some of them look a bit more appealing Which ones of these can we save with sandpaper? <laughs> I'm borrowing one of these from my sanding machine because I've run out of light grit sandpaper. <laughs> but we're gonna do it by hand to be delicate. This clay kicks up a surprising amount of dust, so please be safe and wear a respirator mask and ventilate your space as well as possible. So believe it or not, the sanding actually really helped with some of these pieces. I mean, the phrase you can't polish a turd comes to mind, but we're gonna paint the turd instead. It will be fine. <laughs> they are looking a lot better than they were. So for the mug, I painted loads of little pink flowers all over it. I ended up switching to paint pens in the end because my paintbrush was too thick and they were looking a little chunky. It was so much easier to make fine detail with the paint pens. I let all the pieces dry before I coated them with a gloss which you'll see in a minute. As for the little candle holder I just did a plain pastel pink and uh, you know you know I love pink. This would look really nice with a speckle design but I just wanted to keep this one simple. So with the earring holder and the trinket dish I started painting them blue but very quickly realized that I didn't like it. Typical. Um, I don't love how these turned out, they're a bit streaky and the gold is a little bit dull, I thought it would be brighter than that, so I'm gonna spray paint them pink because I am that predictable. Okay. <laughs> I'm 
I'll let those dry and come back for a second coat. Once those two had dried, I then took another paint pen and started drawing some stars and moons on these two pieces. I actually went in and did them again because I was doing them at the funny angle and they weren't looking particularly brilliant. Anyway, you can use a clear sealant or some Mod Podge to seal these. Like I said, if you want to drink or eat from them, make sure you use something that's food safe. I prefer the spray paint for this because it gave quite a glossy finish. The Mod Podge I used on the flowers and this was kind of an experiment but I feel like it kind of drowned them a little bit and they went kind of wrinkly and I wish I had tried the other method but anyway let me show you the final results. Here is the mug, aka my new pencil pot in all its glory. I'm really pleased with this. It's a little bit wobbly but it's fine and I've got way too many mugs in my house so I'm quite pleased that I've used this as a pencil pot and I can't wait to keep this on my desk, it cheers me up. As for the earring holder and the trinket dish, here is how they turned out after all of the issues I had with them. I think they look really nice with little earrings in them and you can just about see the pattern behind that I painstakingly painted on. These I think are my favourite pieces that I've made today. And here's the daisy dish. I'm really pleased with it, it's very cute, but I do think I drowned it with a bit too much Mod Podge to make sure that those daisies wouldn't come off. I think next time I would try and use a little bit less and maybe some clear sealant spray on the top, but nevertheless, I'm still pleased with it and it makes for a nice little catch-all dish. And finally, here's my candle holder, which was the simplest of all the projects, but I think I think it's one of the most impactful, it looks kind of like modern and fun and I like the colour so yeah I definitely make another one of those again and that is it for all of my clay projects. Before we go today I want to take a quick moment to say thank you to today's sponsor which is Squarespace. You know by now that I use Squarespace for my website, it's the easiest way to make a beautiful website or blog or e-commerce platform. They have gorgeous minimal templates that are so easy to use, you can just drag and drop all kinds of different content boxes so simply onto your website, you can link it up with your social media and it's so easy to track your website traffic and implement great SEO. I love Squarespace, I think it just is a beautiful way to design a website. If you want 10% off and a free trial, check out my link, I will leave it in the description box below and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. <gasps> There's a cat in the window opposite my house and he's just staring at me. I'm highly allergic to you but I really want to pet you. He's just watching the world go by, that's so cute. I love him. Oh, anyway, um, <laughs> so we have come to the end of today's adventures with air dry clay. Um, I would love to know if you recreate any of these or you make any clay projects at all. If you wanna tag me on Instagram, I would love to see them. And uh, if you want, my Instagram is Hermione Chantal, if you wanna check it out. And I think that's everything I have to share with you today. So with that being said, happy clay making and, um, have a great day. Bye.